It's 843. May Habib from the Guam Memorial Hospital uh, joins us. Good morning, May. Good morning, Chris. I know there's a ton of stuff going on uh, over there at uh, GMH, which we're going to get to. Uh, but let's just start with our uh, COVID census uh, update this morning. Sure thing, yeah. So our total overall census of GMH right now is 153 patients. We have 27 of those, which are COVID patients, eight of whom are in the ICU, six of those in the ICU are on beds. Has there been an increase in the number of people on ventilators? You know, it's kind of averaged around like the six to seven mark. So it's been it's been around the same, yeah. Uh, and then uh, any new fatalities uh, reported, uh, May, since the JIC release last night? Yeah, we did have one um, last night that came in. Late last night, we saw it this morning. Um, it was somebody that was admitted. It was not a dead on arrival. So you will likely see that in the upcoming Joint Information Center release, which is, of course, where all official information will be. Do you know any uh, uh, other details? Uh, yes. What I can tell you is um, it was a 76-year-old male who was admitted in the hospital, yes. Uh, vaccination status? He was vaccinated. Uh, underlying condition? Yes, underlying conditions. Um, I don't have it listed here, but I know that there were underlying conditions as well. Okay. Was he admitted to, are you able to say if he was admitted to the hospital for COVID? Or was he there for something else? I believe that he was admitted for COVID. He was admitted September 16th, so about two weeks ago now. Was this uh, patient on a ventilator? You know, I don't know if my data would say that, actually. Uh, I can tell you he was in the ICU. Yes, he was on a ventilator as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else can you tell us about, like, maybe traffic through the ER? I know when we've had you on, you've talked about uh, your kids cycling through uh, the emergency room. What, what's been going on uh, with the emergency room at GMH this week? You know, we're, we're still just as busy, Chris. Um, you know, the, the difference between really the last waves and this wave is that, you know, we shut down a lot of the hospital last year. The hospital was shut down for a lot of things, so it was really focused on just COVID. Um, whereas this year we've had so many patients for just other things besides COVID, right? So when you have that coupled with COVID and all, all things, right, there are still, the community is still completely functioning. So there's still car crashes, there's still accidents, there's still things that are coming through our ER that of course aren't necessarily COVID. So add that on to um, the increase in COVID census and the increase in um, community numbers, of course, it's a lot. And that's why you'll know in, in, August, we shut down our outpatient services. And then just recently, we decided to also shut down elective surgery so that we can redirect those staff. It, you know, we really tried to hold off as long as possible because we did not want to, um, you know, go back to that backlog of elective surgeries. And we wanted to continue and maintain, you know, the great healthcare service that we provide for the community. But um, it really did get to a point where the COVID census was just so high. There were not enough discharges. There were way more admissions than there are discharges. The good news is we're kind of shifting to a good, we're discharging, but we're still admitting. So when you see the COVID census go down, that's not just people leaving. That's people leaving, but we're still admitting people as well. Um, but it's it's slightly positive in that we are seeing it trend downwards, which ultimately means, you know, basic math, the discharges are more than the admissions, even though we still have admissions. But we were at a point Remember when I messaged you and we're, I was like, we're at 49 COVIDs alone. Yeah. And another big difference this time is that we're not the only ones dealing with COVID. JRMC, who, of course, we work with very closely, they're dealing with COVID as well. And they have COVID patients also, yeah. whereas before they kind of shipped almost everybody to us. So it, it's, it's definitely been a different way um, of managing this surge, but it's still been a lot. And we are happy to see it trend downwards. Um, and, you know, what's what's even more exciting, Chris, and part of the reason why it's so busy here this morning um, is the DOD nurses that have arrived. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to make, before we get into the DOD nurses, uh, because we, we've uh, had a story with Dr. Berg, and um, he was talking about how uh, a lot of the cases aren't that serious. Um, but it kind of seems like when we talk to you guys, I mean, we're doing 
everything that we had to do last time, which is bring in these DOD nurses, put up a tent in the parking lot, right? Make, you know, reestablish all the different COVID wards. So when I talk to you at the hospital, I get the impression that you guys are like pretty slammed. But when these doctors are out here talking about uh, the status of the uh, pandemic, they make it sound like most of the people are asymptomatic. So I'm just kind of like trying to figure out what is the the real story um, at GMH. I mean, are are because uh, I mean only one can be true. You guys are slammed. You're tired. Staff infections going crazy. It just seems like we're getting two different stories. Yeah, I mean, I I can't speak for Dr. Berg, and I to be honest, I didn't hear the interview either, so I can't really comment necessarily. But what I can say is maybe they're referencing the general community status that that generally we're seeing more asymptomatic. Again, I didn't hear what he said, um, nor can I really speak for him. What I can speak to is what's happening at GMH. And what I can tell you is the people, the thing is we get the people who are admitted, right? So that is like the sickest of the sick. So of course, when you talk to me, you're hearing that people are very sick and that we're slammed. It's because we're the hospital, you know, we're not just doing the community testing. We're not just um, you know, going to people's homes and monitoring to make sure that they're okay. When people are admitted at GMH, they are sick. They need to be monitored. It's not just a matter of you are COVID positive. We're not an isolation facility. You know, it would be different if we just like held people, you're positive, you can sit in a room and we'll bring you three meals a day. If you're here and you're admitted, you are very sick. So of course my commentary is um, for people that are really sick. And that's why it was really concerning when we were up in the 40s, you know, we'd been hovering around the 39, 40, 41 mark for some time. And then we just spiked up to 45 and then up to 49. And, and that's when it's really concerning. But we have seen that trend before, right, where it goes and it gets to this like extreme breaking point and then it comes back down as we've seen with every wave. So like I said, we're happy that it's trending downwards. It doesn't mean that there aren't admissions anymore. It just means that our discharges are greater than our admissions. But Certainly my commentary um, is alarming because the situation was at GMH was critical, you know, for us to shut down elective surgeries because we need staff. Like I always say, our staff is part of this community too. So we do have staff infections that affects our staffing here. And when our staff is not at full capacity, then that impacts the exhaustion of the rest of the staff. So yes, the GMH staff is tired. Uh, May, you know, you mentioned GRMC and when I, you know, just looking at the JIC releases, we kind of have to like just do math on our own, right? And based on what you guys have there, but you said you, you communicate closely with them. Uh, and unfortunately we haven't been able to get anyone from GRMC on the show. So we don't really know what the situation is there, but just based on your conversations with them, is it kind of the same thing that's happening at GMH? You know, I honestly, I can't comment on, on their behalf. I can only really speak to what's happening at GMH, and that's all. You know, I, I yeah. can't really comment on their behalf. That was worth a shot. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate. I respect the journalistic trying to sneak in there, though. I do. <laughs> so you said you talked to him. So what to say? <laughs> no, Daniel's actually been working with GRMC, okay. trying to get some interviews, but they are swamped, yeah. uh, just like GMH is. So, and that's why we haven't really heard from them yet. Yeah. Can you give us an update on the DOD nurses now? Yes, gladly. Uh, so in all, uh, DOD did commit 15 nurses to us, which is really exciting. 12 of them are here already. Um, they're actually doing their orientation today. So right after I'm done with this interview, I'm heading over to their orientation. Um, just to, it's an all day orientation, of course, to, you know, the, the sort of basic paperwork, GMH, getting used to our, you know, the, the EHR that we use, all of that. Um, so they'll be doing that today. And I believe they're first scheduled to be on tomorrow and then end into the weekend and next week, um, which is a really huge relief. Our GMH staff has been working nonstop, um, just generally, you know, even before the COVID surge, our census really went up when the hospital reopened, reestablished outpatient services, reestablished elective surgeries. You know, we saw an influx of people and we generally saw an influx in the patient census because so many people had held off on getting care, you know, and for various reasons, right? And we've talked about this before, whether they lost health insurance, so they weren't going to see their primary care provider and then they show up in our ER very, very sick. But generally our COVID or our, our patient census has been high since like May, June, July. And then we've seen this uptick in COVID, which has really um, 
pushed us and and pushed the staff and you know it's the staff really does deserve a lot of applause for how much they've been doing and stretching and flexing themselves and coming in for overtime and staying late just to make it all work but i know that these dod nurses are a much welcomed relief um you know it'll it'll augment our our care it'll it'll help us um you know give somebody a day off or a change or, or really have them take their day off which is which is huge we're really excited uh update on the um the other thing you were talking about so we got the dod nurses and then there's also a, a tr uh training you said going on the boost the booster, the booster vaccine, b booster vaccine yeah. clinic yeah yeah so i mean we're really happy to report that overall our vaccination rate staff vaccination rate at gmh is nine is over 96 percent um so not over 96 percent of our staff is vaccinated we only have a 50 or so that are left out of like a contingent of 1300 that aren't vaccinated um much like the community with the boosters for the eligible pfizer only vaccinated staff because we are frontline health workers and we do qualify for the cdc and fda um sort of the new guidelines we are rolling out the booster clinic here in-house uh, it'll be monday to friday from 8 a.m to 12 p.m it's for all the gmh staff who qualify and we're also supporting gpd and gsd as well so guam fire and guam police we're supporting them so uh if you know if, if they're in the service and again they've been vaccinated double vaccinated with pfizer more than six months ago they're also eligible to come in and um, take part in our booster clinic can you give us an update on the uh, status of the morgue and also the uh, reefer container yeah the the reefer container um we're still trying to figure out there there were like some, there's been some back and forth as to um, sourcing the materials, um, but it's moving in the right direction. I know that the quotes are out there to source the materials and have it be here. We don't have an exact timeline, though, of when it will be here, but it's still definitely something we're working towards. Um, we had Chima on. He was mentioning uh, something about a, a tent possibly going up at uh, GMH. Uh, another one? More than the blue med tent? Yeah maybe for infusion um, maybe for infusion yeah uh the infusion for the mab oh. mab infusions uh unless there's a plan for like a totally different infusion clinic i can tell you that the blue med tent that we have here is where we've been doing our sort of mini infusion oh, clinic see. and that's where we're doing our <clears throat> er patient infusions and then you know staff as they needed but it's a very small scale operation mm -hmm. really the main operation um is the gun for the community anyways is the gun manilao um Center, the, they took over the senior center there, I believe. So that's the main operation. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we have been, of course, doing our own little mini infusion mm -hmm. clinic for, for admitted patients or ER patients mm -hmm. that need it for sure. Anything new with the SNF? Uh, nothing. Hang on, I was just in a conversation. Nothing really big. I can tell you that we are moving ahead with um, trying to make it that alternate care facility yeah. and we are speaking with FEMA because I think I mentioned this to you guys before there was like a little bit of a confusion and question around what would happen with the FEMA funding if the public health emergency is declared over because really it's specific funding to make it an alternate care facility for COVID specifically not just generally not just for any pandemic um, but we're working with our FEMA partners closely they're actually here some of the team is um, or at least one or two members are here working very closely they've been so supportive and i know they want us to move forward so we've kind of gotten the green light to move forward with design and planning so one way or another we're, we're going to make it an alternate care facility the plan is to do that all right uh well thanks a lot uh yeah uh, is there any word yeah. on uh, the so you guys canceled the elective surgeries is there, is there any discussion about when they would be uh, reinstituted again or is it kind of just wait and see it's a wait and see. Yeah, we we definitely we'd have to bring our COVID census way down and maintain it. Hopefully, you know, and see community spread as well come down, and then discuss mm -hmm. from there. Thank you, Meg. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. Uh, Eight fifty-six. Let's take a break, and we're coming back with more of the show next. Good morning. Breast cancer is the second leading cause.